ever seen people on Instagram and they have on the most amazing outfit. And you're thinking, I want to look like that in clothes. I want my hair to be done like that, my makeup done. And you're thinking, well, how in the world did they do it? How did they make that happen? How are they up there and doing those things? I have dreams. Most of you in here today, you're here this morning right now because you have dreams, yes? You have dreams, you have goals, and you want to know how can you do it? So we're going to have a conversation today. We're going to play around with a few things. We're even going to experiment. And I hope you see even what's happening right here, right now. Y'all see this fabulous screen over here that doesn't have my PowerPoint up? You see how we're going to rock and roll, right? Yeah. First and foremost, y'all going to give Tanner the most biggest round of applause I can hear in this room for standing up here and being able to help me out with this, OK? Because this is necessary. But this is an example right here of how you get your dreams activated. And I want to share with you something to show you how this actually works. So a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to work with a group of young people, similar to yourself, right? Now, I'm based out in New York. And so the young people I was working with, um, they were from New York City in Manhattan. Anyone here from the East Coast by chance? I got any East Coast folks in here? I'll, I'll, t I'll take half, and I got my folks in the back most definitely. I will take it definitely. All right. So for those of you that don't know, I want to break it down for you, because you may have some impressions about New York that just may not be correct, right? Like it happens. So in New York, everybody does not come from wealth. They are not all rich, which is often the mistake a lot of people think. And the young people that I was working with, they lived in an area of the city called Harlem, where there's a lot of challenges going on. There's a lot of young people that are looking for work. There are a lot of young people that are in situations where they wish they could improve their situations. They're doing the best they can educationally. And it's tough, right? So we got this opportunity to be able to take this trip outside the big city, go out and do a ropes course, which I had never done before, had no idea what it was going to be like. And do you see the danger for the non-athlete in me about what's about to happen right now? Now, any of you familiar with what a ropes course is? I'm curious. Anyone done a ropes course? So let me break it down for you. And those of you that are non-athletes, you will relate to my struggle, OK? Because it is a struggle. They tell us we're all going to get on a bus and drive two hours outside of the city, and it's going to be this really fun and amazing experience. So all of you with me right now on that? This sounds exciting? Great. When you get there, there are a series of challenges that you do where the ropes first start probably about the height of this stage. So you get started, right? And the rope is probably, yeah, it's about this high, right? And you're walking across, you're walking across, saying, thank you, can we give him a round of applause? He just so rocks, thank you so much. I appreciate it, okay. There we go, that was seriously awesome. I appreciate it. So you get, you start the ropes course, and the challenges are about this high where you're walking on a rope, you're holding people going across between, the ropes are tied between one tree to the next, and you help your fellow team members get across, and it seems really easy, and people are cheering, and they're excited. And then you do another challenge where it's a giant plank, it's a seesaw, almost, where you have to try to get all the people that came in your group to stand on this seesaw at the same time without one side or the other going down, right? And so we're all laughing, because of course, you know, somebody messed it up, we got it all straight, and you're like, we can do it, and then someone steps on, and we fall off, and we gotta start all over again. Having a great time, having a blast, and thinking this is the most amazing thing ever, until we got to the end of the ropes course. And when I looked at the challenge that was in front of me, I knew this was gonna take everything I had and then some. Now, I have to preface this by telling you, I am not afraid of heights, right? Like, I generally don't have a problem with heights. However, what they told us that we were going to have to do was strap on a harness, right? The harness went right around, just right here, around your midsection. And you were going to have to climb up this 20-foot pole all the way to the top, walk across this one rope from one side to the other, there is no, nothing there to hold on to, nothing to balance. Like, this is not like you're at a roller coaster experience at all. Walk from one side to the next and then jump down. And I'm thinking, maybe I can go last at this, right? Like, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared. I don't think I really want to do this right now. But that's fine. We're going to make this happen. So a couple of the brave folks, they decided to go first. I'm sure there's a few of you here in this room, right? Like, you see something like that, you're like, no problem, I got this, right? So what, it's 20 feet up in the air. I can make this happen. How many of you folks are like that? 
I love this. I love this. Beautiful. So you understand the folks that went early. They volunteered. They were like, I got this. You were probably seated over here today. That's not a surprise at all, right? I'm not like that, okay? So I'm waiting until everyone has gone because I'm thinking, I'm not really afraid of heights, but I don't want to fall off this rope in the middle of nowhere in front of everybody and embarrass myself. So check out what happens. A couple of the students get to the opportunity to be able to go. And they're walking across the rope, no problem. And then most of them decide to just jump down, right? I, I was thinking, that's way too high for me to jump down. The guy turns and looks to me and says, hey, it's your chance to be able to go. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. This is a challenge. I'm not quite sure how, but I'm going to do this. And I got into the harness, climbed up with no problem, like a little scared. It's a little hard. It's 20 feet up in the air, guys. Like, it's way up there, OK? I climbed up. I walked across very slowly, didn't have any problems, didn't fall. And then I figured, well, I'm just going to climb down the same way that I came back up. And the guy looked at me and he said, no, you have to jump down. You actually can't climb down. You've got to jump. And I'm thinking, it is 20 feet in the air that you want me to jump down all the way down here. Do you understand what's going to happen on the way down, harness or not, as to what's going to happen to me? What am I thinking is going to happen? I'm going to fall. I'm going to break something. I'm going to, like, whatever disaster you can think of was running through my mind. And to put it nicely, I was freaking out, right? And it's even more challenging because I wasn't freaking out in front of a group of people that were my friends and my peers. I'm supposed to be leading this group of young people to be able to make this happen. So I stood there for a minute, tried to take a deep breath in, tried to take a step off. I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. That, that I'm just going to stay up here, and y'all just going to have to get lunch and go home and come back again, and, and we'll see what happens. But I, I just, I, you want me to literally step off the platform? No, I'm not doing that. And I happened to glance over to the side, and I noticed the group of students who hadn't gone yet. What do you think the look was in their eyes that they had right now as to where I was? What do you think they're thinking, the students who have not gone yet? Yeah. Call it out, fear. Pure panic. Because remember, the daredevils went first, right? Like, they already made it happen. They came down. They were feeling good with life, right? They're like, you can do it. And the rest of us are like, no, we can't. No, we can't. No, we can't. And I got the real terror that they had, except there was one distinction that I had done. I at least figured out how to get up and go across. And I remember thinking, if it's based on me and trying to figure this thing out, I might still be up on that rope today, right now, because I was not ready to do it. But I got really, really, really focused on why I was doing this. And at that moment, those students became my why who they were, what they were about, and the fact that I wanted them to know, yeah, you can take on something where you don't know how you're going to do this, right? Like for some of you in here today, I'm betting, you don't know how you might be able to find a job opportunity, right? Like there's a whole lot of questions. How many of you have a whole lot of questions about what comes next right now? Go ahead, show our hands, show our questions. You don't have to even ask the questions, right? But you don't know how you're going to do it. But I realized something, the how, it's always going to be there. But if you get rooted in the why, and if you get really, really clear about why you're doing what you're doing, then anything is possible. So I remember distinctly taking a real deep breath in, saying my prayers, making sure I had made it all happen. And to describe the way that I fell, um, can you picture in your mind right now a giraffe trying to learn how to do ballet? Do you have a picture of that visual in your head? Is it absolutely hysterical? I'm sure that's what it sounded like. I made no sound, pure clumsy, all limbs, all legs, and landed plop down on the floor, which I'm not going to embarrass you and do it today, right? To see the young people who had not gone yet, to see their reaction, and then they realized that they could do it too, that's what I want to share with you today. Today's thing that you want to be able to focus in on is the power of starting with your why. You actually don't have to always know how to do things, right? I'm going to break down a secret. Do you think the adults in the room know how to do everything? No. They absolutely don't, OK? Just a moment ago, when we were up here at the screen, did I know necessarily how to be able to get the screen, the, the iPad, the tablet to talk to the screen? Not at all. 
You don't always have to know how to do things. The importance is understanding why you do it. What is the reason why you're doing it? And what's that bigger thing than you that's gonna motivate you? So I'm clear, for example, every single one of you in here in this room, your why is huge. How do I know your why is huge if you're here in this room right now? And you haven't even thought about this. How do I know that your why is huge? What do you, what do you think the reason is I know your why is huge? Bingo. Because you are here at 8.30 in the morning to make things happen. Can you give yourselves a round of applause for that, all right? Seriously, that is not. That is, this is not for the faint of heart. So here's what I'm going to tell you. All of the speakers that you heard were introduced today will help you figure out the how. Does that work? Is that an agreement we can agree on? We'll teach you the tricks. I'll give you some of the tools that have helped me land deals for my business right now that have been tremendous. And a lot of them are very simple. But it is practicing them, and it's getting comfortable with them. You don't have to worry about the how. But this is the one thing that none of us as speakers can do for you. You have to come in committed to your why. You have to know why you're going to do this thing. Because there are going to be times you're going to have to really roll up your sleeves, right? Ain't going to be easy, right? You're going to wish, why did I do this? Why did I make this happen? But if you keep in mind the power of your why and what that why can now do for you, you will watch amazing things start to happen. So all of you are looking right now a little skeptical at me, right? Thinking, eh, this sounds real old, cute and fuzzy, but like, how am I supposed to make that happen? Is that the question going on in your head right now? Did I get it? Did I nail it? I see some smiles. I think I might have gotten something. Let me give you a demonstration of how you want to activate your why. So let's talk about this. How many of you have cell phones here in the room? Beautiful. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you the instructions first, and then we're going to do it. You are all, and I hope this shocks you and gets you awake, going to come up to this stage right now with your cell phone in hand, and we are going to take a giant group selfie to show you got this, right? Like, you're going to make this happen today. You are so excited about this. Don't worry about how you look. Trust me on this one. I already see the panic looks in your faces right now because the whole point of it is just to have fun, right? How many of you go to school or go into programs in the morning and your first instruction is you need to take a group selfie? How many of you had this happen? Mm -hmm. Nobody, right? Okay, so that's all you have to focus on. Don't worry about the perception. But I want you to come to the stage, be really excited about this, take your phones out, and on the count of three, we're gonna take the selfie, all right? So you, can you guys come up to the stage? You guys ready for this one? One, two, three, come on up here. Let's, take, let's get a giant group together. Take your phones out. Adults in the room count, by the way. I will shout all of everybody out in this room. Does this really count as a phone? Of course it counts as a phone. Hey, come on up on the stage. I'm feeling kind of lonely up here. Come on up here. Don't look shy. I see all of you right here. Y'all know y'all take selfies all day long. <laughs> exactly. And now you're being given permission to make that happen. Come here, Dylan. Okay, and I'm including everybody, okay? Not just some people, everybody. Yes, you need to come up here. Come on up here, Gio, I appreciate that. No, you know you want that picture, Gio. That's right. <laughs> and I'm observing a few things, so this is interesting. Come on up here. Get your selfie action on. Y'all can't fit, maybe right here. We can have a few to come in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and everyone's got their phone. You guys are ready for this one? Yes, ma'am. I got my work cut out for me with y'all this morning. Is that y'all making me work for my money this morning? That's all right. That's all right. We're going to have fun with this. We're going to have fun with this. All right. On the count of three all, we're going to say, one, two, three, we're going to say Kern County rocks to take the photo, okay? You guys ready for this one? On the count of three, one, two, three, Kern County rocks. All right, go back to your seats again now. Go back to your seats. Give yourselves a round of applause for that one, guys. Go ahead. They got me working this morning, but that's all right. Thank you, I appreciate it. So I noticed something. Can I have a little bit of fun with y'all? You ready for this one? And you might have noticed it yourself. There were a couple of people that when I gave that instruction, People came walking right up. They were like, yeah, I'm going to make this happen, right? And then a couple of folks kind of came up a little bit. What does she have me doing? I am extreme. Why am we doing this? What, what's going on right now? And you felt a little bit nervous. So talk to me. If I started out the session this morning, or if any of the speakers started out the session this morning, as a matter of fact, and we walked, 
like this. I'm going to actually start from over here just to demonstrate to you all. I'm doing this on purpose, y'all. I notice I can't even do it. Good morning. Can I get a round of applause, please? Good morning. How would all of you feel? Awkward. Awkward and like, why did I get up at 8 o'clock in the morning for this? Did I get that right? Yes? yes? Of course. So here is one of the secrets to success that you may not have been conscious of. How you walk, even when you don't know what you're getting yourself into in professional environments, it matters, it makes a difference. If you walk with thinking about your why and what's important to you, what's your why for every single person here in this room this morning? There is one why of why you showed up at this session this morning. What is your why? God. That's a beautiful thing, say it again. There's one why, what's the event that goes on this afternoon? It's easy, it's not a trick question. Job fair. Job fair, so what's your why? What's, everyone has a consistent why in this room today, what is that? Job. To get a job, right? Yeah. Now, think about this for a second. The employers are going to be out there this afternoon, right? And they're going to be seated out. Did anyone do their homework and see the list of the employers that are going to be here? Yeah. Now, if you walk up to their table, really shy, maybe they won't notice me, How do you, what's the impression that you're going to give them? Then you're going to be like versus, versus the impression that I know every single one of you can do because did you notice how you walked off the stage as a group? You guys walked off the stage happy. You had a little bounce in your step, a little happiness, but like, this wasn't hard. She just made us take a group photo. I can do this, right? There is something very powerful in how you walk. It may seem very simple, it may seem very subtle, but it is a very powerful technique that if you want to be successful in life, walk as if you already are, okay? There's something very, very unique about being able to do that. So I'm gonna challenge all of you in here today. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple of speakers that are here in the room, all right? I'm gonna have them check and make sure that you are carrying yourself shoulders up, right? Walking straight. It's a little corny though, isn't it, right? Like you're feeling a little kind of like hesitant right now? Don't sweat it. Because the more you practice this and the more you do this, the more people will pay attention to you. And they will help you figure out the how just based upon the way that you actually walk. Let me share with you another technique that's pretty powerful. Can I get a volunteer to come up? Beautiful, come on up to the front of the room. Give him a round of applause, awesome. Yeah, come up on the stage, okay? So I love this, all right? First thing you meet someone, shake hands. You see the power of that? What happens when you shake hands or you gave great eye contact? I knew this would happen. When you shake hands, right hand by the way, okay? You shake hands with somebody, you give them good eye contact. What does that say about you? You're confident, right? Like you're ready to make things happen even if you don't know, because you had no idea what I was gonna ask you for, did you? No, no. And I love that you were willing to take the risk to make that happen. Your name? Zachary Chambers. Zachary, look, give Zachary a round of applause. I appreciate it, thank you. And let me demonstrate real quickly. I've seen some bad handshakes in my time, y'all, okay? So we gotta, Zachary, do you mind if we have a little bit of fun here for a second on this one? All right, so the handshake. There's a handshake where someone takes your hand and they start going like this with you and they're sewing your hand off and you're like, slow down, slow your roll, all right, relax. Good handshake, right hand firm, good eye contact, and drop your hand, right? There's another handshake that I've seen too. I knew that Zachary wasn't gonna do it, but I gotta warn you, all right? It's that handshake when you're nervous and you're kinda like, you ever get the limp dish rag handshake and you're like, what's your reaction? Everyone started laughing. What's your reaction when you get the limp dish rag handshake? My hand slap. You're like, ew, right? So don't, so Zachary, humor me here. Don't go like this, right? And give this little weak handshake like this. I want you to give a really firm palm to palm handshake, good eye contact, and put your hand down. I promise you this afternoon, if you do just that, when you're meeting the employers, all you have to do is introduce yourself. You won't have to think about anything else. They will help you out, right? Because how many young people your age do that? Walk confidently and shake hands. Very few, it never happens, right? So let's actually practice this real quick. Thank you, Zachary, so much. Feel free, you can have a seat. We appreciate that, thank you. Let's practice this. It's okay to be corny in here this morning, right? Nobody's watching, right, except for us, because you're serious, you wanna make things happen. You're more focused on your why, right? So go ahead, stand up and shake hands with two people next to you. Practice a good, firm handshake. So I'm intrigued, did that feel good? Yeah. It felt a little comfortable, it's not that deep, it's not that hard. Let me teach you another secret about your why. If you from here on in, if you are at an event like this 
and you come to an event where you know you're trying to make connections, right? That's really what a job fair is all about. You're trying to make connections. Because how many of you have already sent your resume out to hundreds of places and ain't nobody answering the emails, right? You've all had that experience, right? That's a common experience, totally. So the trick with an event like this is you have to step outside of your comfort zone a lot of times to make those connections happen. So I'm very curious, this will be the real test, how many of you actually connected with some of the employees that are here today from America's Job Center? How many of you did that? Couple hands go up in the air. So all the whole team that's in the back row, did you have a couple of people that came up to you and shake hands? Yeah. Kinda, sorta, you did? I like this, awesome. Why do you think you want to make sure to make connections with them? Get a job. Get a job. Get a job. Good impression. You know why? This is an irony. Because they're here to help you with your why. Do you get that? You want to figure out how to be able to make things happen. They are the people that were able to attract all of those employers to have someone physically show up today. Do you get how hard that is to get an employer to say, yes, I'm going to agree to show up for several hours and talk to maybe two people, maybe 200 people. I don't know how many. Do you get how difficult that is? That's a pretty intense job. Matter of fact, every single one of those employees that are here today from America's Job Center California and from Kern County, give all of them a round of applause. That is serious. For a minute they will help you figure out the how does that make sense don't be afraid now from here on in to make those connections even when you're nervous even when you're not quite sure because the more that you do it the more comfortable that you're going to be able to get with it and let me give you a quick demonstration of how that comfort level you can ease that comfort level I want you to do me a favor take your hands out for a minute and shake your hands real quick shake them out and clasp them together Look down and see which thumb is on top. Call it out, I'm curious. Left. Right, All right, left, okay, left. So shake it out again. Clasp them together real quick. Together. Same thumb on top? Yeah. yeah. Interesting, all right. Shake your arms out for me, okay? Clasp them together, fold them together. Look down, see which arm is on top. Right. Call it out. Right. Okay, intriguing, I hear. All right, shake it out again. Cross them together real fast, don't think about it. Same arm on top. Yeah. Some didn't have it? Okay. Most of you probably did. And do you guys know why that happens? It's really fascinating how it happens. Say it again. Because of your dominant hand. So it is related to your dominant hand. The very first time that you were a baby and you took whatever in your mind was this thing and this thing, whatever we called it as babies, right? And you put them together, you formed a connection in your brain. This is how it's done, right? You have probably clasped your hands like this the same time, exactly the same way since the first time you did it as a baby. And let me demonstrate how I can prove this point right now, because you don't have to believe me on this one. Try folding your hands and clasping them together with the opposite thumb on top. And watch the difficulty. Right? Like it's the weirdest thing ever. It feels awkward, right? And if you really want to get a laugh, try putting the opposite arm on top. Try that for a minute. Go ahead and fold the opposite arm. Can you even do it? Yeah. It feels weird, right? It's awkward. Like, what in the world are we doing here? But here's the secret. Similar to when you were a baby and you were learning how to walk. Did we all figure it out? Yeah. yeah. Somehow, some way, right? There were probably a lot of bumps and bruises, but you kept at it. You kept focusing on. And why? Because as a baby, you were curious. You wanted to see what was going on. You wanted to see what was happening in the world. And you knew that this was your way of making it happen. So I challenge you. Similar to the clasping your hands and folding your arms, practice these skills. Yeah, they're a little awkward, right? Like they feel a little corny. It's kind of like, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to make this happen? But practice it with people who are really here to help you in terms of being able to make your next steps happen. Because I know the more you practice this, the more you're gonna see amazing thing happen in your world. So I will tell you firsthand, and I'll share a little bit about my story later on as to how I went from where I started out as a, young, as a only child of a single parent to where I am right now, where I have a business that allows me to go literally across the country, speaking to young people like you, developing programs and things of that nature. I did these very things, and they were just as awkward as everyone here in the room when you first start them. It's hard, right? It's outside of your comfort zone. But keep practicing it, and keep working on it, and keep doing it. So I'm going to leave you with some final thoughts to share really how to put this whole why together. I purposely put up a few stars here. Do you guys recognize who's up there? Yeah. Who's up there? Smith. Call him out. Will Smith. The guy from the Lakers. 
the guy from the Lakers. I appreciate that. As a non-fellow athlete, I appreciate that very much. But you recognize his face, right? Kind of, sort of. Got it. Would you say that these are people that are pretty much at the top of their game? Like they're doing some pretty amazing things yes. at what they're doing. They are. I'm going to tell you that every single one of you in here has that same potential. Are they talented in the field that they're in? Most definitely they're talented. Every single one of you in here are just as talented as well too at being able to do these things. And here's the thing, if you listen to the stories, did anyone by chance check out the Netflix special with Beyonce? It was about her why. Did you guys get that? It was literally all about her why. This woman practiced for a two hour performance for eight months, for a two hour performance, if you think about that. Why in the world would anybody do that, especially for someone who performs on a regular basis? Because her why was calling her. That's what was most important to her. So I challenge you, similar to those young people that finally got me off the ledge, right? I finally jumped off the rope because I said, I want them to understand you can take on things that are scary. It is going to be scary, but you can do it. I also want to give you that gift as well here today, which is if you start with your why and you keep your why at the center of everything you do, the how, you will learn all of those amazing things next. You will figure out every single step that you need to make that how happen. So I want to end with this final thought that today is the beginning of the rest of your life. And with that, if you focus on why you are here, you will make some amazing connections. You will make some amazing opportunities with employers happen if you get outside of that comfort zone, just like you did showing up here at eight o'clock in that morning, in the morning, and go figure that out. You knew that there was a magic number, a magic number, one number in particular, that could help you figure out how to get all of the success in life that you want career-wise, professionally, that you could take on everything that you want to do, and all you had to do was understand how this number worked, would you be interested in figuring that out? Yes. I'm actually interested myself when, when, you, when you think about it, because that's pretty tremendous, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a session right now to highlight a few ideas behind that. And make sure that we keep it interactive because when you go out after this session and you're connecting with the employers, I want you feeling confident, I want you feeling pumped, I want you feeling really good about being able to tell your stories, right? So I want to share with you something. Um, when I was about 17 years old, I had this crazy opportunity that landed in my lap. I mean, just absolutely wild when I think about it. I had the chance to be able to go to this event um, ironically, it was in a ballroom similar to this. And they told me that if I attended the event, that they were gonna give me all the free candy I could eat. And I got a sweet tooth. Any other sweet tooth addicts in here? Like, they had me right there. And on top of it, they were gonna give me 10 bucks just for showing up. That's pretty nice, right? Like, you just gotta show up, you get free candy, what else do we need in life? So I went in after school, right? I got my backpack on, I got my school clothes. I went to Catholic school, so I had a Catholic school uniform on. And I walked into a room about this size and freaked out. Everybody in there, they had on suits and they were dressed business professional and they're walking around and they're shaking hands real confident like. And I'm like, all right, I'm this high school student. I'm totally out of place. I don't know what to do, what's going on, but I want my $10. So I'm staying until I get my money and then I'm out, right? So I sat in the back of the room Kind of like, I noticed that some of you sat in, in the back of the room. You didn't want to sit up front? You were nervous about things? Kind of shy? Uh huh. I don't have $10 to give out, but I am going to tell you that sometimes when you sit in the front of the room, magic does happen, by the way. So I went to the event, I sat in the back, tried to be as quiet as possible so that nobody would hear me, and started listening to this opportunity that they were giving. And this is what they started sharing. They were like, listen, you could own your own vending machine company, right? These cute little vending machines, the, the soda machine was about this high, the snacks machine were probably only about, about this wide, and you could make, oh, I don't know, 200, 300 bucks a week just with five hours worth of work. And I was like, wow, that sounds really, really cool, but that takes money. And when you're a high school student, do you have money? The way I said it, exactly the way I said it, right? Your parents have money, right? 
but you don't have money, right? So I thought, eh, no big deal, right? But I went home and told my mom about it. And you know, my mom, we weren't of wealthy means by any stretch of the imagination. She was a single mom. She worked as a nurse. Um, everyone around me worked in a lot of different types of employment, but we weren't rich. And I told her about it. And she shared with me something that I will never forget. She said, well, listen, um, you, you know that there's this opportunity that's in front of you, right? And if it's something that you really, really want to do, I'm going to make a deal with you. So backstory to this, my grandmother had unfortunately passed a few months earlier. And as the matriarch in the family, she left me her car. So I thought I was you know, about to live the good life. I'm 17 years old. I got my own car. Life is grand, right? Like paid for everything. And she said, I'll make a deal with you. If this is something that you think you can do and you can really stretch outside of your comfort zone, I'll give you the money to be able to get the machines. So I was like, wait a minute. I'm working this fast food job at McDonald's where I'm making that type of money, like putting in 20, 30 hours, and I can now do this for five hours a week? I am sold. Let's do it. So we did it. I still don't know why my mother let me take that risk. But beautiful, we come in, the machines come into the house, they bring them downstairs into the garage. I'm all excited, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be making money. It's only five hours a week, it's gonna be amazing. And then a month rolls by. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be making money, I'm gonna get these machines out here, and it's gonna be amazing. And then a second month rolls by. And you notice what happened now? The machines haven't gone anywhere. They're in the house the whole time. Because what they didn't tell me, what the company didn't tell me, was that, yeah, they were going to sell me the machines, but it was up to me to go out and find the place to be able to put them in. They kind of left that fine print out. So it's month three, and I'm starting to get a little nervous, because, you know, what am I going to do? I've now wasted all this money on this idea, and I don't know how I'm going to be able to turn it into something powerful and positive. And so one day, I was sitting in my room, and I want to see if some of you could relate to this. I have a mother who was very quick to give me her opinion. Do you all have mothers like that? Very quick to let you know when you're doing right and you're not doing so right, right? So my mother was very loud, right? Like she would let you know right away, like you messing up here, this is something going wrong. And so I'm starting to get nervous because there's a couple of months going by, she's gonna come in the room, she's gonna yell at me, it's gonna be on. And she threw me one of the biggest curveballs I ever got from her. She came into the room and she was silent. Now, those of you that have a mother that argues with you and gets angry, if your mother gets silent, what is that a sign of? Oh, this is like next level trouble. It's about to be on. You don't know what's going to happen. I will go so far as to say I would have rather the tongue lashing or heck, I would have rather the old school beating if that's what came down to it than her being silent because I had no idea what she was going to do. So she stood there for a minute and she didn't say anything. And now I'm getting real nervous and my heart's beating real fast and I'm starting to sweat because I'm like, she's never done this to me before. What am I supposed to do? How am I going to make this happen? So in my moment of desperation, y'all work with me here, I ran to the closet, grabbed the first suit that I could find, a bright lilac purple suit, put the suit on my body, threw some shoes on and ran out the house. Because at least if I wasn't in the house, whatever was going to happen wasn't going to happen. Now, I tried to find a picture of the suit for y'all. I, I really did, because I thought that you would appreciate that laugh of me in a lilac, like bright purple suit. But I couldn't find one. But I am going to find one later on for you, all right? So I'm outside, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to make this thing work? She is going to lose her mind if I cannot find a way to get these machines out the house and making money. But what am I supposed to do? I don't know anybody that works in business. I don't know anyone where they're willing to take a vending machine from me. No one in my family is entrepreneurial. How am I supposed to do this? And so I just went up to the first door that I could find, got real nervous, real scared, put my hand up to knock on the door, and then remembered, well, Either this person is gonna make me scared or I gotta go home to my mother and tell her that it didn't work out. So I'm gonna deal with whatever this person tells me because this is gonna be easier than my mother, right? Can you relate now? You're like, this is easy, I got this. So I went to the first door, I knocked on the door. Hey, my name is Maya. 
Um, I've got these really cool vending machines and your employees, they don't have to leave their offices now, they can eat whatever they want. And they were like, uh, yeah, no, not for us. And then I knocked on the second door. And I'm like, yeah, they're gonna get it this time, right? Like, I'm gonna get somebody interested. And I knocked on the door and I'm like, hey, you know, I've got this opportunity where we can put vending machines right in your offices. They don't take up a lot of space. Your employees, they won't leave the office. They won't be taking break time like crazy. And you know, it's a great win-win for everybody. Second door, they looked at me and was like, yeah. I knocked on the third door. They didn't even open up. They just flat out just let me stand there looking at the door and I'm like, well, I guess they're not interested. <laughs> That's okay. And what I did was I knocked for the next two weeks on probably about 100, 150 doors until I found people that were willing to say, you know what, we'll take a chance on this. There's something that you're saying about this where what I was selling to them, because I started listening to what people's feedback was, well, if we could have our employees have healthier snacks, nobody wants all the junk foods in the machines. Can you supply that? I was like, yes, I could do that. I could totally do that. I didn't even know that was an option until I just started knocking on those doors. It took me about two and a half weeks, guys. Again, remember the pressure of my why. My mother's reaction was powerful in the back of my mind. But I found that wearing that lilac suit, being a crazy young person and being willing to knock on doors and hear no, again and again and again, having a lot of doors they weren't open to me, people eventually started paying attention. And they started saying, hey, I'm not interested, but I know this company over here, they might be interested in what you have. Why don't you try them and see, and I'll make a phone call for you so that you don't have to go in kind of by yourself and figure this one out. So I share that story with you today because you may in your career have to knock on a lot of doors, right? Finding a job, it's not always easy, right? There's a lot of rejection that's involved. There's a lot of questions that's involved. You might have worked someplace before. It was great. Now you're trying to find the next opportunity. How do you find it? It can be really hard. But I am here today to let you know that if you start with just one door at a time, I would have never thought I could have knocked on those hundred doors. There's no way I would have thought about it. I just kept going up to the next door. That was it. And just knocking. And it's the same way that I'm going to encourage you here today that rather than looking at the big, big picture of everything that you want in life, the secret to the success is change 1%. You don't have to change the whole thing at a time. You start out with one thing, you take one step consistently, and over time, that's how you're gonna build up your steps to success. That's where your power comes from. So let me give you an example. How many of you in here today have connected with one other person that you did not know at this event. How many, how many people do that? Nice, I'm impressed. So you were in here listening to the conversations about building community, huh? How many of you went to Jessica's session? Give me a round of applause, you went to Jessica's session. She did a rock star job, right? So here's the deal. I'm gonna give you an activity right now everyone's gonna be able to get involved in. When you're at events like this, are there other young people like you who are also motivated and also want to go places in life? Yes. Most de I like that, most definitely, exactly. So if you hang out with your other non-broke friends versus hanging out with all the amazing folks here in this room today, who do you think is going to probably wind up finding the job opportunities first? Me. Exactly. The folks in this room that are like, I'm going out here, I'm making things happen. So here's what I'm going to challenge you to do right now. Find one person in this room that you have not connected with thus far, just one person, and go ahead and exchange contact information. And I'm gonna be real renegade. If you wanna exchange social media handles, go for it. However you wanna stay in contact with them. Because here's the secret. Do you think that the America Job Center is gonna do another event again? Yeah. Of course they are. Do you wanna walk in that room by yourself? No, you don't. I promise you, you don't. There's power when you're going in with somebody else. So stop feeling you gotta do it by yourself. One thing, find one other person to connect with here in this room, get their contact information, and when you're going to an event like this, you pick up the phone, you call them, text them, carry a pigeon, I don't care how you get to them, right? And you invite them. Because that's how you're gonna start making changes in your life, because you're gonna take one small step that will lead over a period of time to some pretty powerful things. So go for it. Go ahead and connect with one other person you did not know already here in the room. I'll give you a minute to do that and exchange contact info. 
So that power of 1% right now, you're thinking this, this 1%, this is like really small, right? I made a connection with one person. Wow, so what does that mean? One person, okay? Just one other person connecting with one other person. There are some amazing things that are gonna start happening with that connection with just one other person, right? Did I get everyone? So the folks right now in their careers who are earning the most in their careers and are out doing the things that they wanna do, one of the things that you just did right now is what they do on a regular basis. It's not only how talented you are, but it's how you build up your relationships and the people around you, what your community looks like. So I'm gonna challenge you again. When you leave out of here today, make sure you stay in touch with that person so that when you're at an event like this, you're not going in there by yourself. You're going in with your community. You're going in there with your tribe, right? 1% over time, it's your tribe, totally. 1% over time is gonna lead you to have a network where you're gonna turn around and have 20 people, and have 50 people, and 100 people that wanna do the same thing like this, right? That's pretty powerful. That, by the way, is the secret to where all jobs are at. Did you guys know that? Most jobs are not online. The way you find job opportunities is you making connections with people, right? So you going out of your way, when you leave out of this room, I want you to take that same energy. Have any of you been practicing the business handshake? Yeah, that I shared earlier? When you give a good handshake, good firm eye contact, and I want you to connect with one person at a time once you leave out of here. That's how it happens. Don't feel overwhelmed, don't feel intimidated by the room, right? It feels really easy to do that. But you just think about me knocking on those doors. You can totally do this to be able to make those next steps happen, right? So all of you impressed me, I have to say. You went from very serious to like, I'm just gonna do one or two things, because she said three and that's it, to folks were getting down and dirty at that last one. I saw shoes, I saw stuff in people's hands, I saw someone carrying a chair in the back over there. Like, you were getting really, really creative. And you know what? That energy, as crazy as it sounds, that outside of the box thinking, that creative thinking, right? Employers want that. They want you to be able to bring new ideas and new insight into the work that you're doing. So I hope that all of you felt empowered because I'm gonna let you in on something. When I do this with adults, and adults in the room, you know where I'm going with this. They don't always get as creative, right? Like they're looking at me like, Maya, I changed three. We are not going to five. Not gonna happen, right? Yeah, right. That, but you guys have that creativity. You have really new ideas, innovative, fresh insights into challenges that people have wanted to be able to solve. Recognize that power. Do each of you in here get that? That that's something you bring to the table for an employer? You wanna be able to talk about that and give examples of that. But first, I have to get you to understand that in order to get in front of that employer, you're gonna have to keep taking those small steps on a regular basis to make that happen. So let's talk about some skills then and some things that employers want you to be able to do and how you can show up with that 1% and making that 1% shift in your life, right? Like how do I keep going at this again so that I'm able to make things happen for me tomorrow and the day after and the day after that? Because that's the reality is once you leave out of here, we're not gonna be here to provide that support and you gotta take action on all these steps once you leave, right? Like you gotta figure out how to make those things happen. So let's talk about a topic that a lot of people often like to avoid, but I think it's a pretty powerful one. Time management. Talk to me about time management. What do you know about time management? What do you think is so important that employers want you to focus on about time management? Be on time. Be on time, right? And let's keep it real. Sometimes that can be a difficulty, yes? Yeah. That can be really challenging to be able to do. So here's the idea behind it, and I'm gonna take a couple of insights with you to help break these things down with you. Those of you that were here this morning for the 8 a.m. session, you guys deserve a round of applause for that time management because you got here and you made it happen, right? Exactly. So here's the deal. For those of us who, we need a little bit of help on time management. I want you to think for everyone here in this room about one thing that you do really well around managing your time, and think about one thing that, eh, it can use a little bit of work on. You know, that's an area that you kind of have to be able to improve on. And please, be real. Everyone has something that they need to be able to improve on in this particular category. 
And rather than trying to get overwhelmed and just saying, well, yo, I didn't show up on time, I'm just not gonna come in, it's not gonna make a difference, no. You start with that 1% change. You just look at one way to change one small thing to be able to make things happen, okay? So turn to the person next to you and share. What's one thing you know you do really well time management wise, and what's one thing that needs a little bit of work that you can actually kind of improve on? Go for it and share with your partner, whoever's next to you, okay? So now, are you feeling a little bit more like this 1% thing? This can really show up and make a difference. So I'm giving you an example up here, guys. Hold on one sec. I'm giving you an example up here of one way to start thinking about any time that you get feedback from here on in where people are saying you do some things really well and there's other things that you want to be able to improve on, break it down into the 1%, guys. Don't try to tackle the whole thing all at one time. So I gave one quick example that came up. I've heard it from a number of young people that share, you know, sometimes I'm not always good about being able to plan to be able to be on time, but I gotta think about how to plan ahead for things. So come up with a time when you do plan well, and then focus on the one thing that you need to do to be able to move next to move the meter. So now, I also want you to think about with this 1% rule, right? Some of you in here right now probably have a lot of questions about these employers that you're gonna connect with next, right? Talk to me about some of the questions. What are some of the questions you have about the folks who are out there? Talk to me. Wait, hold on one sec. Let me come over with the mic. Talk to me. Go ahead. Stay up. Go ahead. Okay. So I know California High. There's an employer you're interested in? Yeah. Um, okay. CHP is here, and my question would be like, um, what would I be doing if I was to get hired at California Highway Patrol? Because you know. They, are, they drive cars on highways, and I'm 17. I can't do that yet. So that'll be one of my questions. Yeah. I think this is a valid question, yes. So they're here. Clearly, they know your ages. They're interested in wanting to connect with you. But what would my job look like in that particular regards? Good handshake. A nice. Did you see the good firm handshake? All right. So here's what you want to do with this 1%. If there are employers, has everyone on here identified at least three employers that you want to be able to connect with? Have you done that part? At least three, okay? Do not leave out of this session after we gave you all of these insights today and don't take that first step towards committing towards your real life once you walk out of here, all right? So if you've got at least three that are on here, I want you to do what we've done, where you start thinking about what is one question, that's the key, one question that I can ask all of these employers. Now, I'm gonna give you a hint on this one. If you go up to an employer, and you start out by shaking their hand, right? This is your, your tip, giving good eye contact and asking a question. I promise you, there will be no dumb questions that you can ask. So go ahead and be willing to take that. I will be very frank to say you've got me curious now. I don't know, but I'm sure that they have opportunities that they would definitely love to be able to talk to you about. But the key with all of this is, is you've got to take that action on that one step. So when you get the chance now to leave out of here and go into this next session, do not sit down waiting for the magical person to come and tap you on the shoulder and say, you got the job. You gotta be willing to go up, shake that person's hand, ask questions, engage, and you'll figure out how to be able to do it as you move on. That's how you're gonna be able to make those changes. Don't feel that by sitting back that you're not gonna be able to make that move happen, all right? I'm also gonna share with you another insight as well with the 1% rule. I didn't finish yet. I didn't finish yet, but we're gonna get, we get there. I didn't finish yet, I apologize. No worries, no worries. So we know that communicating with people, it takes a lot of practice, right? You gotta work on those communication skills. So here's a t an activity that I want you all to be able to try. Do all of you have a sheet of paper with you to be able to work with? Something to be able to write on? Go for it. Take a sheet of paper out. And we're gonna work on the 1% rule around communication and how well you communicate, okay? On this sheet of paper, and you will have no idea why I'm asking you this, but there is a reason for this, by the way. I want you to draw on the top of this sheet of paper the scariest monster that you can think of right now. I know, scary monsters, job fair, where's this going? Trust me, this is all about communication. So go ahead on the top of it. It does not matter your artistic skills, by the way, so don't worry about it. If all you can do is a stick figure monster, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Go ahead and draw a stick figure monster on the top of that sheet. So here's the deal. I'm curious, how many of you had monsters that you drew that looked similar to the monster that 
the person the other person drew? How many of you had ones that were similar looking? They kind of, sort of looked alike? They look similar, kind of, sort of? And how many, of you, how many of you, when you looked at what the other person drew, said, that is not what I said that I wanted you to draw? How many of you had t two totally different monsters that you were able to draw? How many folks? Probably a whole host of you, right? My monster. You drew your monster, you did. So here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. Good communication takes a lot of practice, okay? So when you are thinking about, when you are thinking about connecting with employers, you may have some times initially where you're gonna have those two monsters, they're not going to look alike. I think about some of the first job interviews that I had, or even for that matter, the first couple of times that I knocked on doors. I had no idea what to say. I just knew that I needed to, you guys had a good, a good drawing over there? Nice job. I just knew that as long as I stood in front of somebody, I was gonna have to figure it out. But it takes a lot of practice to get comfortable being able to communicate well. So here's what I'm gonna challenge you to do. Do you have a number in mind of the number of people that you wanna be able to connect with today? Yeah? yeah? Shout out your number for me. All of them. I like this, all of them. How many others? Infinity. Six. Six? Here's the deal. Infinity. Good deal. So all of you, hold on guys, hold on. So all of you, take this energy right now. Do you notice how more engaged you are right now in this conversation? You guys are all talking a lot more, I like this. Keep that energy going, keep that business walk going, make sure you're shaking hands when you're meeting the employers out there. For each of you here that have drawn a list of the number of people that you wanna be able to connect with, I'm gonna challenge you, talk to at least one additional person that you did not have on that list. Why? Why do you want to do that? You never know what might come up out of that conversation. I've had a number of conversations where I've been working with different companies, for example. So one of the opportunities that I had a number of years ago was I got the chance to be able to create these giant youth entrepreneurship programs for young people. And through being able to do this work, one of the things that we taught the young people was to do exactly what we're sharing right now, where you figure out how to just talk to just one more person. Because you never know what may come out of that conversation. You never know what they're going to be interested in being able to, to share. So for all of you in here right now, do you have at least one question that you can ask the employers that you're gonna connect with? Toss to me some questions that you have. Beautiful, so we've got some questions about what are the benefits of working for you? How many hours, talk to me. How flexible can the work schedule be with my school schedule? I love it, how schedule can the work schedule, how flexible is the work schedule with my school schedule? So here's the thing that I will tell you, you guys have an advantage. Do you understand the level of love that the employees that are here from America's Job Center have for you right now? Do you guys get that? The level of love that they have? Kind of, sort of, not really. So here's what I want you to do. Before you leave out of this session, when we end, I want you to go up and high five somebody that works here with America's Job Center. Because one of the things that they have done to your question is they've made sure that every employer that is here is interested in working with someone your age. That's pretty tremendous. In one day, in one event, like that doesn't happen, right? That doesn't always happen in that regard. So if you're trying to go out on your own, you gotta guess if they're gonna be able to do that. So I can actually answer that question for you partially by saying every employer out here wants to speak to each and every single one of you, but you gotta take that one step and be willing to go out there and connect with them and shake hands again, I like this good handshake going on right here, to be able to say, hey, how do I get involved? What do I need to do to be able to make that happen, right? So I wanna close with an activity that I think really, when you step outside of this room, and so just so that you guys know as well, my friends Gio and Jessica in the back, can you give them a round of applause? They spoke earlier, did an amazing job. Yes, yes. Okay. So I noticed the energy in the room shifted, right? Because we're gonna get ready to go out actually into the sessions where you get to connect with the employers, right? There's a little buzz going on in the room. You guys went from focus to like, oh my gosh, we have to go out there and talk to all of those adults. What do I do, right? You feeling that nervousness? I got you, I got you. Do not have any nervousness at all about these conversations. We will be around here today to be able to work with all of you if you have questions. There is no dumb question, by the way. So if you're not sure, what do I ask? How do I introduce myself? How do I make that connection happen? That's what we are here for today, but 
The thing that we have included on a regular basis is you got to be willing to take the action. You got to be willing to say, this is important, this matters to me, so I'm going to do what's a little bit scary and I'm a little uncomfortable with and figure out how to make it happen. And let me leave you with an activity that will give you some confidence on being able to do that. If everyone can do me a favor and stand up and stretch up as high as you possibly can, as high as, high, as, high, as, high, as you possibly can. You feeling really good? Put your arms down, all right? Shake your shoulders out now, right? Get a little wiggle going on. Feeling good? Did the lunch settle in? Yeah, good deal. All right, now I'm gonna have you stretch up and go even, 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 even higher. And put your arms down. Now, there's a powerful life lesson thrown in here. When you think you have gone as far as you can possibly go, there is another level that you will have to reach to go higher. And I challenge all of you in here today, if you took notes on what the speaker said, and you're focusing now on your commitment, and you're not worried about being all up in your feelings, if you're focusing on your community, and you're not thinking you're doing this by yourself, or if you're focusing on some of the insights I shared earlier, start with your why. Start with those young people that really, really get you going and stop worrying about being able to do it. You're going to have to reach five inches higher. You start with those things first and you can do it. So here's what I need you to do while you're standing up without hurting yourself. This is the important part. I want you to figure out a way to stretch five inches higher than the time that you did before. There's a way of doing it. Five inches, there we go. Give that gentleman a round of applause right there. Nice job, nice job. Love it. Let that be a lesson for all of us in here. When you think you've gone as far as you can go, there's another five inches higher that you can step up to make things happen. You guys have been an amazing audience. I hope you have taken away some valuable insights, yes? Love it.